Hello, and welcome to Read Naturally's webinar on GATE which is a reading intervention for small groups. My name is Claire Hayes, and I'm gonna be your presenter today. I have used GATE myself. Um, I've been working for Read Naturally for about 16 or 17 years now, and GATE is one of my favorite interventions, and so I'm excited to share it with you. Before we get started, I wanna first thank you for being here. Um, it says a lot about you as educators, that you're willing to take out some of your precious time that I know you don't have much of, uh, to learn about something that may help some of your students. Um, so I really wanna, take a moment to thank you for the kind of educator that you are and that you're willing to do that. Next, I wanna draw your attention to the handouts. There are two handouts for this presentation. The first one is simply a copy of each slide from the presentation that you're going to view today. Uh, there are based on the one column for you to write notes and slides on the other side of each screen. So feel free to print that out um, if you'd like and make notes on that handout. The other handout that we have is a teacher sample. And in the teacher sample, there are student booklet samples, as well as the display book sample that shows what the students see on the display side. As you can see in the picture there, the teacher's showing students aside. The side you don't see that the teacher is able to see is the script that the teacher follows. And so we have a sample of that in that booklet. You can also print that off or just have it handy when I reference it so that you can take a look at it. Um, it's also nice to just get a feel for the program um, and to have as a resource for you when you're making decisions about this program. So first we're gonna talk about the purpose of GATE. GATE is to help developing and struggling readers improve their phonemic awareness, phonics, high frequency words, fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary. It is implemented through teacher-directed instruction in small groups. It's a supplemental curriculum that works well in a tier two or tier three intervention in an RTI model. As we work through the program, you will see how GATE can be effectively implemented as an intervention in this intervention model. During this presentation, we will discuss the research that supports GATE. Then we'll talk about which students should use GATE and which students can benefit the most from GATE. We'll talk about how to use GATE to support your students. And then we'll go through the different steps of the GATE program and what students do through those steps. So first, let's talk briefly about the research that supports GATE. Um, in this day and age, we always need to take a look at the research and make sure that the programs that we're using um, have a basis in research. And so um, I just wanna take a moment to reassure you that um, GATE certainly does have that. The National Panel identifies, the National Reading Panel, excuse me, identifies five key components of a quality reading curriculum. And these components, of course, include phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. The panel also states that we have to explicitly teach these skills. And the GATE program is able to do that and does that. The GATE supports phonological awareness, phonics, and word recognition, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. The students develop phonological awareness in GATE by listening for specific sounds and syllables and words and learning how to blend those sounds and syllables to make the words. Students develop phonic skills by strengthening their proficiency with the letter, sound, and letter combinations by learning to decode one and two syllable words. And students learn to read regular as well as irregular high frequency words with automaticity. And students learn to spell short words with the lessons featured phonics pattern. So students also expand their vocabulary. They read nonfiction stories that have topics such as mimes, glaciers, and fog, and they learn about these concepts and, and these words. GATE also includes multiple components to support reading comprehension. Students improve comprehension by making prediction, answering questions, and writing sentences about what they remember from the story. The fluency component is achieved through three research-based strategies that are the read, make up the Read Naturally strategy. The first one, of course, is teacher modeling. And teacher modeling occurs as students actively read along and mimic the teacher's phrasing and intonation. Teacher modeling teaches word recognition. It allows students to work in a level that maybe they couldn't handle on their own because the teacher is modeling the proper way to say the words as well as the expression and intonation. The next component 
is repeated reading, which of course repeated reading is just mastery learning. And students read the same passage over and over again until they have mastered the words in that passage to the point in which they can read them in subsequent passages, right? We want them to become automatic with those words to the point that when they see them in a different passage, they're also able to read them. The final strategy of the research-based Read Naturally strategy is progress monitoring. And this gives students a specific goal to work toward as they practice doing one-minute timed readings of the same story over and over. Students are able to see their improvement. And this is incredibly motivating for students. And as we all know, who've worked with students for a while, that the motivating a student and getting a student to buy into the program is essential to its success. And the progress monitoring is a very key, important component of that. So now let's take a deeper look at how to use the GATE program with your students. GATE is available in three separate levels. Each level has 24 lessons, and each lesson has, is about a nonfiction story, nonfiction topic. The first level is 0.8, and it focuses on short vowels. The middle level is 1.3, which focuses on long vowels. And level 1.8 focuses on blends and digraphs, inflected endings, and two-syllable words. Regular and irregular high-frequency words are emphasized in each of the lessons in all three levels. The GATE program materials include 24 lessons per story, as I mentioned. And in those, there are a nonfiction story, there's specific sounds, letter patterns, and high-frequency words that are taught for each of those 24 lessons. Each GATE level includes a teacher's guide and reproducible masters. The teacher's guide has a couple sections. You can take a look at it in your um, teacher sample. The, guide, the teacher's guide part starts where the letters on the bottom of the page start with a T-1, T-2, and so forth. The beginning part of the teacher's book, of course, is instructions for the teacher and how to use the book and how to set up the program. And then the rest of it is the display book that the teacher is showing in the picture you see on your screen. The students are viewing a page. On the other side that you cannot see is where the scripted lesson is for teachers to read at the beginning. And eventually, they'll be not need to lean on it quite so hard. Um, but it's one reason it's so easy to implement right off the bat because of that um, very detailed instruction and um, guide for teachers to use. You'll notice if you're looking at your sample that there's red words for in the teacher's script. The red words are what the teachers say. The gray words are suggestions to the teacher as to what to be doing as far as pointing to which letter, when to pause, and those sorts of things. So it's very, very helpful for students or for teachers as they're beginning to implement it. The reproducible masters are the beginning part of your teacher sample handout. And if you take a look at that, you'll notice that there are pages with a dotted line down the middle. That's where you fold the lesson in half. And so you print the lesson on one sheet of paper front to back. And when you fold it down the middle, you have four sides. Each booklet of the reproducible masters comes with the 24 student story booklets. It also has student record sheets. There's 12 spaces in the record sheets, as you can see in that handout. That handout, the section that I'm looking at, is the one that starts with the S at the bottom of the page. And you'll notice that there are 12 bars in each of the graphs. And so if you print that back to back, you have a one sheet page that can take the student through all 24 lessons um, of the specific level. There's a high frequency word assessment. There's also crossword puzzles in the Reproducible Masters. There's a parent letter, answer keys, and achievement award. So all of those are included in the program materials. When you're setting up the program, you do need a few additional items. You're going to need a digital timer. You only need one because the teacher is in charge of the timer and she does all the timing for the students. So if you're familiar with Read Naturally Encore, um, you know that each student either needs their own timer. And this program is for students who aren't quite ready for that independence. And so the teacher just needs one timer. It does need to be digital. Um, we have them available for purchase. You can also purchase them other places. Um, but a digital timer so that it's exact and doesn't count down the seconds is ideal. Students also will, students will need red and blue graphing pencils. We also sell those. However, you can purchase them someplace else or even just use a crayon, a red and blue crayon. Um, blue is for the cold timing, which is initial first timing, and red, of course, is for the hot final timing. And they can use those to graph on their um, 
on their graph sheets for their reports. When you're trying to decide a setting, such as a classroom with a small group of up to six students, we, ideally, you would have six or fewer students in your small group. It can be used as, you know, a station in, within a classroom. It can be used as a resource pull-out or push-in program. Before and after school programs also use it, as well as tutoring situations. Students that work in GATE are students who are beginning readers and need extra support. So GATE is designed to be presented by the teacher to groups of students of up to six students with very similar skills and needs. GATE is ideally used or can be used as a precursor to one of the Read Naturally programs. So if you use Encore or Read Naturally Live in your, in your school or district and you have students who aren't quite ready for the independence of that program, GATE is a great program for those students. Not only is it a great program for students who aren't quite ready for the independence of Encore or Read Naturally Live, but it's great to teach them how to do Encore and Read Naturally Live because many of the steps are identical to the steps they do in the independent programs of Read Naturally and, and Read, Naturally, uh, Read Naturally Live and Read Naturally Encore. So it is a great match for those students. You can use the information on the table here to select the appropriate level of GATE for your students. So students who know the letters of the alphabet, they have some knowledge of the letter sounds, and are able to recognize at least 15 to 20 written words, they can begin in GATE level 0.8 with a focus on short vowels. In GATE, the teacher modeling and repeated reading provides scaffolding that enables students to be successful when reading challenging text. So because even if they can only read 15 to 20 words, they can still be successful in GATE level 0.8 because of all the support the program provides. Students who read at an early to mid first grade level can work in gate 1.3 with a focus on long vowels. And students who read at a mid to late first grade level can work in gate 1.8 with a focus on blends, digraphs, inflected endings, and two syllable words. Becoming familiar with these, with the text difficulty of these stories will certainly be helpful to you in a selecting the appropriate level. Just for your information, Read Naturally uses Lexile measures as well as Space and Fry readability formulas to determine the level of each story. And each successful level, the stories become longer and more complex, but the stories within a level are very similar in their readability. Gate lessons should be scheduled daily, and one full lesson generally takes about four 30-minute reading periods or five 20-minute reading periods. So this is how you might break it up. If you have 20-minute sessions, you might do it, um, you know, you'd have five, you'd finish a lesson every week or every five days. Um, if you have 30-minute sessions, uh, then you would every four days about be beginning a new, a new lesson. So now we're going to walk through the steps of the GATE program. And we will talk about the different areas of reading that they focus on for the various steps. So the first activity promotes phonemic awareness. In particular, the ability to recognize a featured sound in each word. Okay, so students listen for a vowel sound in levels 0.8 and 1.3, and they listen for blends, digraphs, inflected endings, and compound two-syllable words if they're working in level 1.8. So phonemic awareness is developed as teacher tells the students the sound of the featured letters and asks the students to repeat that sound. So then the teacher says a word containing that sound while the students listen and decide if the word has the featured sound in it. So if you take a look at your sample, um, if you look at the script on T1, and I'm going to read a little bit of it to just demonstrate what I just said to you about how they are getting phonemic awareness so that they're listening for the vowel sounds in the words. So here's what a teacher would do during this section. I'm on T-1 if you want to follow along and notice that I read the red words as we're displaying the story. The name of this story is a rat. Every word has at least one vowel sound. The vowel sound in the word rat is a. Ah. Listen for the a ah sound in this word, rat. Look at me. 
Listen to each word I say. If you hear the ah sound in the word, put your thumb up. If you do not hear the ah sound, put your thumb down. Listen, an. Do you hear a ah in an? Yes, you hear ah in an. Listen to another word, fit. Do you hear an ah in fit? No, you do not hear ah in fit. Okay, so you're trying to get students to identify when they hear the right sound in a different part, in, in part of a word, whether it be at the beginning sound or the middle sound, but you're trying to get them to listen and figure out when they hear that. The next activity also supports phonemic awareness. In particular, the ability to recognize words made by sounds or word parts blended together. So the teacher blends letter sounds or word parts together slowly to make a word, while the students listen carefully to determine what word the teacher said. The students then say the word in unison. So the teacher slowly says the word sound by sound, and then is expecting the students to be able to blend those sounds together and make a word. So if you take a look at T-3 in your teacher sample, this is the section that I'm talking about here. And we'll start a little bit down the page on this as I just demonstrate for you what this sounds like. Look at this red word. This word is a high frequency word because we see it often when we read. In this book, the red words are high frequency words. It is important that you learn to read high frequency words correctly and quickly. Slowly blend each sound of this high frequency word with me. Ready? And what word? And then students respond, an, and the teacher says, yes, an. Look, blend slowly with me. Ready? K, a, t. What word? Students say cat, and the teacher says yes, cat. And you continue in this manner through the words on the list that the teachers, that the students are viewing through the demonstration flip book. Now students work on improving their phonics skills. So phonics skills are developed through the direct instruction of sounds and letters. The teacher points to each letter or letter combination and tells the students to name and so the name and the sound of the letter. Students repeat the sound in unison. So on the sheet that you're looking at here on your PowerPoint, the teacher would first start out by pointing to A, and she would say, this is the letter A. A says A, ah, and then students would say A. Ah. This is the letter R. R says R, and then the students would say R. At first, the teacher will be very direct instruction with this. She will point to each letter, name the letter name and the sound it makes. Eventually, the teachers will just point to the letters and the students will be able to say the sounds independently. And so that step will move quickly, um, more quickly as the students become more familiar with all the different sounds that the letters make. Students continue to develop phonics and word recognition skills um, when they're decoding sound out words. So stu first students learn to decode phonetically regular words that contain a featured sound. These are called sound out words because they're decodable. And many of these words are also high frequency words. If you take a look at T4 in your book, you'll see the sample that, that students would be viewing. An is a high frequency decodable word. Sum is also a high frequency word, but it is not a sound out word. It's not decodable right? It's what we call a spell out word. So a spell out word is taught slightly differently. It's taught with the I do, we do, you do model. You say the word, you spell the word, and then you say the word again. And so in this way, the students are taught the words that they cannot decode. So we're looking at the word some in this situation, and I tell the students to listen. Some. S O M E sum. Now do it with me. Sum. S O M E sum. Now you do it on your own. 
and then the students would say by themselves, some, S-O-M-E, some. Okay, so that is the different way that we teach a sound out word versus a spell out word. And of course, the repetition of just spelling it and saying it is incredibly helpful to the students, as well as the repetition through I do, we do, you do model of instruction. Now let's move to the next activities. Students now work on developing comprehension skills by writing a prediction about the story based on the keywords in the picture. This pre-reading activity prepares the students to read the story and reminds them that they are reading for information. So if you take a look at your story booklet handout for a rat, so in the section that starts with the S's, look at the information on the first page. The teacher and the students decide on a prediction to write on those lines that you see on the first page. So let's say that the students and the teacher decide to come up with the sentence, rats are in some labs. Ideally, you want the prediction to include at least one of those words that are in the box, maybe two if, if you can do it. Um, and you also want some words in the prediction to be have that you know pattern, which if you're including one of those words from the box, you will definitely have words that have the sound that the story is dedicated to. So I begin by asking the students to slowly say the first word of the sentence, which is rats, with me. I emphasize the first sound by stretching it out while we say the word together, rats. Then I ask the students what sound they hear at the beginning of the first word, which of course is rrr. I write that letter on a surface that students can see well, and you can see in this picture she's writing it on a whiteboard. At first, some students will just copy the letter, but the goal is for them to write it on their own. So as the students become more competent, I pause before I writing the letter on the board. So they have a chance to write it before me. I move through each sound of the word in this manner. So you could picture me writing the capital R on the board while the students write R in the line of their books. Then of course, I would say, ah, and the students would, and I would write the letter A and the students would copy it. And then I would say T, and they would write the letter T, T, and the students would copy it. And we would do that for the rest of the words. When we get to a word like R that isn't decodable, I would do R, A-R-E-R, -E just like we did with some a moment ago. Now students work on improving their fluency skills. Before the students read the story along with the teacher or practice, they do a cold reading of the story for one minute. Each student reads individually as the teacher times the group. The students should not read in unison. And the teacher listens to one of the students read while the other students read orally to themselves, underlining words they do not know. They should be taught to underline and then keep reading as best they can. The teacher listens to a different student do a cold timing for each story. So eventually the teacher hears each student complete a cold timing. And this cold reading sets the baseline for measurement of growth. So if you have a group of six students, you will listen to after reading, completing six lessons, you will have heard each one of them do a cold timing. And you will probably mark the graph as to which one you did with them so that you have an idea when you're looking back at their record sheets. Students record and graph their individual cold timing scores in blue on their fluency graph. And with this visual representation of their timing scores for each story, students begin, will begin to see their progress. Students continue working on fluency as they complete the read along step with the teacher. So this is the teacher modeling step, and teacher modeling supports students so they can learn new words, confirm difficult words, and master sight words. This activity also models appropriate phrasing and expression for students. The teacher and students first read the story together aloud from the chart in the teacher's guide. The teacher reads slowly enough so the students can actually read along, pausing to decode short A words with the teacher. 
if it's a short A story, of course. During the second read-along, students read aloud from their own booklets as they point and listen to each word. The teacher always reads along with them during this step. Students continue reading along as many times as the teacher determines is necessary. So the first reading is slightly different than the other read-alongs. At first, the teacher is holding up the teacher's guide and she's pointing to the story of a rat, which is the one that we have in our sample. So first she reads the title, a rat, a rat. Then she goes on pointing to the text of the story. A rat is an, a rat is an animal. Does this sentence make sense? She pauses for a moment to make sure that students are comprehending what they're reading. But you notice that when I said rat the first time and when I said and the first time, I slowly decoded it for the students. So the first time the students do the read along with the teacher, that is what the teacher is doing with those short A sounds as she's slowly decoding them. The second time they read along with the teacher, they're not looking at the teacher's finger on the display book anymore. Now they're looking at their sheet in front of them. And so the teacher just reads it as it's written slowly and carefully so that the students can read along with the teacher. Next, students continue working to improve their fluency. The teacher times the group of students for one minute. She listens to one student read while the others quietly read out loud independently. She continues timing the students in this way each time listening to a different student until she has listened to and recorded the score of each student. So for each lesson, she ideally would get to listen to each student at some point during the practice or as the cold timing. Students repeatedly read the text and get the opportunity to master the words in the story. And students, students learn to decode phonetically regular sound out words and learn to read irregular high frequency spell out words. Okay. Students practice independently until they can reach their goal. Students then mark their graphs in red to record their final timing scores. This gives students the opportunity to monitor their progress. Students who pass can continue to read the story, answer the questions, write a sentence about the story, or work on a crossword puzzle while waiting for other students to pass so that the students remain engaged. So let's take a review moment to review the Read Naturally strategy. GATE helps students develop fluency by using the Read Naturally strategy. And in the cold timing, students get the chance to monitor their progress by setting a baseline for each story. Students and teachers will also be able to see their cold timing scores improve from story to story. In the read along, the teacher models correct reading of the story decoding three to five words with the featured sound while reading the words with expression for the students. They read along quietly but out loud, which helps them learn new words and master the high frequency words. In the practice and pass step, students repeatedly read the text until they master the story. They also get the chance to monitor their progress by seeing the improvement they have made from their cold timing scores to their final timing scores on each individual story, as well as from story to story. So let's turn back to the activities for a moment. And now what students do is answer questions about the story. This activity encourages the students to remember what they have read and remind them that they are reading for meaning. If you time a student reading, he thinks that the rate of which he reads is the most important thing. And so as the teacher, we are constantly reminding them that what the most important thing really is that they're understanding what it is that they read. It continues to support phonics development by giving students the opportunity to write words with the featured phonics patterns. So you'll notice in this sample here of the comprehension questions that the words that fill in the blank follow the phonics pattern of the story. This activity also assesses students' comprehension of the story, and this step can be done independently or as a group. And that's going to depend on the teacher and the students and the situation, and it can change over time. At first, you may require them to do it as a group and then do it more independently, and maybe one or two break off and do it independently while you work with others in a more of a group setting. And so that is going to change and be different depending on the students.
Students continue to work on comprehension by writing a sentence about the story. In the beginning, this activity can be done as a group. But as students become more independent, you're going to want them to be able to start doing that on their own. And this is an optional activity because it may require more time than you have for these lessons. So sometimes the sentence about the story is dropped off um, because you want to get on to the next lesson. And so that is um, definitely something that is probably the most common step that is removed is this final one here. Students again work to improve their phonics skills in the last activities of the story by reading a word list. This activity promotes phonics skills as students practice decoding words, see word families, and see the patterns in words. So the teacher introduces the words to the students by blending them slowly while reading down each column. So on this lesson that you're seeing in front of you, they would start by reading an, t, an, k, an, ran, and you notice that they all rhyme. Then the students practice reading the words as a group with the teacher. Then the teacher listens to and times the students as they read the words down and then across independently. So students practice this until they can complete the list of down the columns and across the rows in one minute time. So now look at the word list. Um, it's on page TS of your student booklet in the teacher sample, um, but you can also look at the one that's on, on your list here. And you'll notice that the words reading down, as I mentioned before, are words with featured sounds, they're words that rhyme, and um, in the final column, they're irregular high frequency words. You'll notice that they're all the same in this one, some, 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 um, and that is because the words are um, it's the first lesson, and so that's the only word they've been introduced to. And so as the lessons progress, those will change because they'll be introduced to additional words. When they read across, you'll notice that they have a variety of words with featured sounds. The words do not rhyme, and so it is more challenging for them to read across. And so they will have a, a very simple time of reading down the columns. And then when they get to the across part, that will be more challenging for them. However, you've provided enough support and instruction that they should be able to do that after practicing a few times, be able to read down the columns and across the rows within a minute. So now students continue to develop their phonemic awareness, phonics, and word recognition by spelling skills and spelling skills by writing words from the story. So students write the irregular high frequency spell out words and four sound out words with the feature sound of the pattern. So if you look at the spell out word, this is the first lesson and it's sum. And so students are going to do what we did when we introduced the word at the beginning. They will say the word, spell the word, and then say it again. And they will do it two times on this sheet. So they will say sum, S-O-M-E sum, sum, S-O-M-E sum. Then for the sound out words, they will be given words by the teacher. We suggest that you include different, not all words that rhyme. So perhaps you pick lab and sat and ran. So you're getting a different word from each of those columns, from each of those patterns. Um, and then because there's four, you're going to have to duplicate one. Um, and so you're going to provide the word and the students will then write it. You're going to sound it out slowly so that the students can write it as you sound it out for them. As you get further through the lessons, further deeper into the lessons, you may not sound it out so carefully. So the first few lessons, when you get a word like lab, you may say lab, lab, lab. And then as you're getting closer to the end of the lesson, if lab was the word again, you would just say lab, and you would hope that they could do it without all that additional sounding out of the word. Each story has a corresponding crossword puzzle. Uh, the crossword puzzle features additional practice for reading and writing words in the featured sound. And each crossword puzzle includes a word bank um, from the list of words that will go into the crossword puzzle. Students who have read along with the teacher and passed the story can work independently on crossword puzzles from the current lesson or from a previous story while they're waiting for the other students to pass. So it's a nice wait time activity. 
So when you are using GATE to support beginning readers and developing readers, um, we know that RTI, the RTI model is a good place for students to use this program within that model. You will need to conduct periodic diagnostic phonics assessments if you're doing it within the RTI model. Um, the other thing, another way to think of that is a phonics skills checklist. So for example, we have something called the quick phonics screener. I'm sure there's other quick phonics screener type um, assessments out there, but the quick phonics screener, which we call QPS, is a diagnostic phonics assessment, and that can be used to help confirm that students working in GATE are mastering the phonics skills as they move through the program. So this information will also help you decide if you need to make adjustments in student instruction. It will help you determine when a student no longer needs the support of GATE or is ready to move on to Read Naturally Encore or Read Naturally Live. And suggestions for adjusting GATE instruction can be found in the teacher's guide. So if you find that one or two of your students aren't making the progress that you would expect and want them to make through this program, we do have many tips um, in the teacher's guide for altering, um, adjusting the instruction, as well as we have resources at our office by calling our office um, or looking on our website for tips and suggestions for that. So just to review, GATE uses Read Naturally's research proven strategies to help and support students as they learn and work on phonemic awareness, phonics and word recognition, high frequency words, fluency, comprehension and vocabulary. I hope that this webinar was helpful to you and that you were able to get the information that you were looking for. Um, if you have additional um, concerns, questions, please feel free to contact Read Naturally. Um, the information to contact them is listed here on your screen. My contact information is also listed on your screen, so feel free to reach out to me directly if you would like to do so. So again, I want to thank you for your time today. As I said, I know how busy you are, and I greatly appreciate your willingness to take some time to learn about um, Group and Tutoring Edition, or GATE. Uh, we appreciate your time and hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.